Woof. Guess what? New dev blog. Yeah. Yeah, new dev blog. So, this was actually released on the 25th, three days ago, and since I don't stream on Friday and Saturday, I've missed it. I haven't gotten to uh, comment on it. So we're going to do this on stream before we start playing. So let's look at this, shall we? This has to do with new Japanese battleships closed test. So what Warships is saying is, in one of the future updates, we will add a second branch of Japanese battleships to the game. Currently, it's still in the early stages of development, but we want to share the first details below. So when they say in early stages, they mean they're not even, I think they mean they're not even going to share statistics now. We're going to see in a second, but um, that's interesting. They're really, it looks like they may be sharing this really, really early, which is interesting. <laughs> Hmm, excuse me. Now, maybe this is why. Let's see. We want to celebrate the line's upcoming release with a community camouflage contest. Okay. That might explain this. Uh, see more details here. So you can go over and let's, let's click on that real quick. So, yeah, you can basically go down here and get this blank thing and make a camo and submit it. And, uh, yeah, the winner uh, gets their camo on the Tier 8 uh, battleship that they're going to be releasing. So, kind of interesting, huh? Okay. Take advantage of multiple in-game rewards, and we will add the winning design to the game. Ooh. So, we will. they will add three new Tier 8, Tier 10 ships to the game. Yumihari, Adatara, Adit and Bungo. Okay. This one is a rid is initially it's automatically going to get dubbed the bunghole. I can already tell you that. That's what probably I bet everybody's going to call this one the bunghole. Um, in any case, tier eight to tier ten, uh, these sh the ships are battle cruisers, playing at medium to long range, capable of dealing significant damage per salvo. Now, battle cruisers. Well, why are why are they only doing tier eight to tier ten? And the reason I ask that is. You've already got a tier five battle cruiser in the game in the line, the Congo. Why don't you pull the Congo in then come up with a tier six and seven, and then you just have to release a new tier five uh, battleship uh, for the regular battleship line. Just make a tier five version of the Fuso. Just, you know, the Fuso's got what, 12 guns? Well, take a turret away or something and reduce the range a little bit and you know, whatever, reduce and add a little bit to the reload or something. I mean, just make make a 10-gun Fuso at Tier 5. I mean, you know, it's not very hard. At least I don't think it is, but I'm not a game developer. Maybe it's maybe this is a lot easier to do it this way. Um, but yeah, you've already got to, and Congo's great. Congo's fantastic. I love that ship now that I've started playing it some. Um, so yeah, I'd, I, you know, I, I guess... Maybe I don't know. Maybe there's no money at tier five to seven. I just don't know. There's I don't understand the reason for that. But uh, you know, you did it with the Brits. You did the British the whole line, and you've already, like I said, you've already got a head start with the tier five. Uh, so why why not go for it and and do a whole line? But okay. So we just said these are medium to long range, significant damage per salvo. Hmm. The new Japanese ships have powerful main battery guns with the trademark Japanese features, high firing range, and good good accuracy. Surely they jest. No, what? Let me let me rephrase this. What Japanese battleships have is they have pretty decent horizontal dispersion, but they have the crappiest vertical dispersion in the game. So, and and what that means is horizontal dispersion is how far right and left your shells go. So those are, those are actually usually a little bit better than other battleships lines, if you're looking at battleship. But the vertical dispersion is how far short or long the shells land of where you aim. And theirs is by far the worst of any nation in the game as far as battleships are concerned. So that's... To me, vertical dispersion is more important. That's why some of these Russian ships 
you know, can just absolutely annihilate stuff because they have such good vertical dispersion. Um, you know, I, anyway. Yeah, I don't, I don't get that um, thing there. Um, the main caliber is represented by eight 410 millimeter guns at tier eight. Okay. Uh, the tiers nine and 10 ships will feature eight and 10 457 millimeter guns respectively really just what they did with the british line the ships also have good concealment and average speed so i understand as a battle cruiser yeah i would i would give it better concealment than because one of the japanese drawbacks is they have crappy concealment i mean like fuso at tier six things spotted from the freaking moon i mean most of the battleships on the japanese lines have poor concealment um so but wow more over matching guns with 457 millimeter guns this is why i play mostly dds and battleships and not cruisers <laughs> especially at high tiers because who wants to just get wrecked by every gun in the game um now they're saying that these battle cruisers have average speed. I thought the whole point of a battle cruiser was something that was a little speedier and could relocate easily or could get away from trouble easier because it's a little faster, you know? Like Congo. Uh I think Congo at tier 5 is probably the fastest ship at tier 5 if I remember. The thing goes with a with a speed flag. I think it goes something like 32 knots when most of the battleships at tier five are going 22. So, um, yeah, some of this doesn't make sense. Some of this just doesn't make sense. And just an overall thing on the, on the battle cruisers that we've been seeing. And it seems like as a general rule, what Wargaming is trying to do is say, oh, a battleship, we're, we're just going to make it, we're going to make it lightly armored and fast, but put bigger guns on it than the regular battleships in the line. And what sense does that make? You'd think a battle cruiser, you know, would be more lightly armored, would be faster, but would have a little more moderate guns on it, like 16 inch guns at tier nine and 10, you know, something and would have good concealment so it can get closer. It can get, you know, 11, 12 kilometers away before it it suddenly unleashes its 16-inch guns on your broadside, which, yes, they will hurt. Um, but I just don't understand that overall thought process on some of these battle cruisers. Um, it seems a little backwards for a battle cruiser. Look, I mean, look at the German, some of the German battle cruisers and the pocket battleships. That's, you know, kind of the deal there. They had smaller caliber guns um, but they were meant to be faster and have better consumer yada yada uh, so anyway uh, off of that rant but yeah so that's interesting then so good range which is a Japanese thing I get that good accuracy uh, yeah they they can give them good accuracy and what I would do uh, what I would do and if you base this on the other battlecruiser lines that are released, is yeah, give them like you, you see these battlecruisers. They have battlecruiser accuracy, which is much better than battleship accuracy. But I would still give them worse vertical dispersion than the other battlecruisers because that's a Japanese thing. That's kind of how I would keep that. So you know, you you have even better than normal Japanese battleship dispersions, but you still have worse vertical dispersion than other battlecruisers. Uh, that's how I would represent that to keep the Japanese flavor. Since it's already there, go ahead and keep, keep up with it. So uh, their disadvantages are the low HP pool, which should be a thing for all battlecruisers, and mediocre armor. Again, uh, that's a battlecruiser characteristic, not just a Japanese battlecruiser. However, it's compensated for by the improved repair party. Now, I'm guessing improved means it's obviously not a super heal like the Brits get. That's more, I think the improved is more like 
what like the um like the tier nine and ten uh American battleships, not the faster repair party, but basically the one that that's a little better than average, so in other words yeah it'll give you it'll give you more hit points back than um say a Missouri like Missouri, which has the you know, the old battleship hill um as opposed to the improved hill that the Americans get. I'm assuming it'll be similar to that uh which restores more hit points per second okay, so there's that so here is Japanese battleship Yumahari at tier eight. you're looking at eight guns. they said this is four tens I mean so this has even though it doesn't necessarily look like it. Uh, I mean, it's along the lines of a tier eight Congo. It, it's just going to be a Congo with bigger guns and good range in, in a way, in some ways, uh, by my view. So the spiel about this is in 1916 to 18, about 20 variants of the, of the pre-design for the battleship Yumahari were developed as part of the 8-4 plan. The most elaborate was the B-62, which was an evolution of the Congo-class ships. Okay. It included eight variants with four double-gun main turrets. Two ships of this type were intended to be built, but the project was changed at the end of 1917. A fifth turret was added. The final result was the Amagi-class battlecruisers. And see, there's another one. You've already got the Amagi in-game. Uh, which is really kind of more of a battle cruiser to some extent, uh, but so yeah, so this is kind of like a four turret, really kind of like a four turret Amagi, probably a little bit more along those lines. Okay, uh, then in 1916 and 18, uh, no, I'm sorry, we're going to the next one Japanese battleship Atatara at tier nine. Um, after revising the 8-8 plan, Japan needed to build four battleships and four battlecruisers. The K variant was chosen to become the new battlecruiser out of the 13 variants proposed. Four number 13, ooh, number 13 ships were ordered, but they were never laid down because the Washington Conference started. Okay. And again, it looks like you're just going from the tier eight, like tier eight, which is an eight gun Amagi, to tier nine being an eight gun Amagi with 457s on it. That's, I mean, that's what I see happening here is you've got a very similar ship. It'll get a little more hit points, the bigger guns, yada, yada. Um, is it just me? Now, this ship looks, you know, fairly long, a little bit more like a Congo. This ship looks a lot shorter and more maneuverable, but this has got to be, see, this thing's not even, doesn't even have any color on it. I wonder if this is like a, uh, it's skewed. Uh, it's just kind of like the way they've got it on here. It doesn't look quite right. It's a little compressed or a little, um, not sure what the right word is, but basically the view is a little bit off. It's possible. Okay. And then lastly, yeah, and I see Bogey One. I, you know, no telling what the conceal is. They're telling us about this so early. There's no statistics with these. They just tell us they have good concealment. Now, compared to the regular, <laughs> a lot of the ships in the regular Japanese battleship line, everything has good concealment. But here is Japanese battleship Bungo at tier 10, or as, as we're going to call it, the Bunghole. Um, so it looks like here, you're again you have eight gun you have an eight gun amagi with 457s now you're going to have a 10 gun amagi with 457s it's got the three turrets in back like amagi does um and again you it looks like it's just going to be an extension of this one you're just getting a turret added so you're basically increasing your fire uh your uh, dpm by what 25 percent assuming that they don't screw around with the reload times. Uh, but basically, you're, you're adding an additional... You're going from 8 guns to 10 guns. That's what that amounts to. Um, I would assume it would get a, a small a bit of, you know, more hit points and, and that type thing. Uh, you know, just have a few more appointments than the Tier 9. 
So this says for the Bungo, among the designs for the new Fleet 8.8, there was an enlarged version of Project A called Project L. Like the key, Project L had five main caliber turrets, but with 457 millimeter guns, and also overcame the key in terms of displacement by about 9,000 tons. The battleship key and Project L weren't built because of the Washington Conference, which imposed battleship holidays and a limit on the total tonnage of battleships. Okay. There you have it. And of course, the disclaimer at the bottom that all information is preliminary might change multiple times during testing. Um, so, yeah, we'll be uh, interested to see the better the, the next generation of models that they make of these. Because you see, this one's got the color on it. This one doesn't. This is gray. I mean, what the heck? Um, so that tells you how early this is. Then this one's gray with a few little... I don't know why a lot of these areas are red, but I mean, obviously they're not complete yet. They just said, y'all got to give us something other that we can put up here on the website. But yeah, so um, the takeaway is we get more battle cruisers. That's fine. They've got 457 millimeter guns, which is more overmatch, more bad news for cruiser players. If you like to play light cruisers, well, that's, have you ever heard of the TS rule? Yeah, if you know what the TS rule is, I mean, if you know, you know. But that's, yeah, it's just tough shit is what that means. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, my, my only disappointment that I see so far is why they don't just make a whole line like you did with the Germans and the British. You might as well. Um why not? Because you've you've got the you've got the ships to do it. You've already got some stuff in place to do it. So anyway, maybe they didn't want to mess around and tweak around with the uh with the existing um line of ships. I don't know. But in any case, that's what you have. You know, it it it's interesting. Um it's interesting. We'll see how it goes. And, you know, if you want to take uh, if you want to get into the camo contest, we'll go there and find the link and get in there and design that camo and, and uh, maybe get your design in the game, which would be cool. So that's it. That's the uh, dev blog from uh, May 25th uh, that I'm a couple days late looking at. So um, I think now it is time to go out and play Warships. So let's do that. Thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to see notifications of future videos, just ring the bell. Until next time, Tater Dog says, woof.